When you think of a nuclear reactor, you probably think of a gigantic power station somewhere on a remote piece of land far from civilization. This story teaches us that things don't always have to be that way. This Boy Scout decided to build a nuclear reactor in his mother's backyard. The protagonist of this story, David Hahn, was an ordinary young man from Michigan in the United States. He lived with his mother in Detroit. From an early age, David had been obsessed with chemistry, where other children expressed this interest by mixing different shampoos so that they can feel like a scientist. David took a different approach. At the age of 14, David already managed to manufacture nitroglycerin. Nitro what? Nitroglycerin. The main component of dynamite, a very powerful explosive. Not exactly what comes to mind when you think of introducing your child to the wonders of chemistry. David was an enthusiastic member of the Boy Scouts, the American Scouting Organization. With the Boy Scouts, a child can achieve personal development in all kinds of different areas. While some Boy Scouts specialize in tying knots, building huts, or navigating without a compass, David was mainly interested in other things. David's mother had a beautiful backyard behind her house with a garden shed at the end. She didn't use this garden shed much because she mainly chose plants that required little maintenance. David's antics gave her an idea. She didn't know at the time whether this would turn out to be a good or a bad idea. David was allowed to turn the shed into a laboratory. One advantage, if he were to work with explosive materials again, she wouldn't be at risk. What she didn't know was that from this shed, David would be risking the lives of tens of thousands of local residents. And all in the name of science. From this laboratory shed, David conducted several life-threatening chemical experiments. Where most scientists have a strict security protocol, David was just messing around. American Boy Scouts earn badges immersing themselves in various topics. From this shed, David would do anything to have a chance at a very special Boy Scout badge. He was determined to become the first Boy Scout to pin this badge to his chest. There was just one obvious reason that no one had yet dared to take on this challenge. To achieve this badge, you had to deal with extremely complex and dangerous matter. The badge David was determined to get was the Atomic Energy Badge. The requirements for this badge are as follows. The Boy Scout must be able to explain some terms related to nuclear energy, build some 3D models of atoms, and draw a picture of how nuclear fission takes place. In addition, he must be able to explain how different scientists had contributed to the field. Write an argument about how and why people should be careful with nuclear energy and build three other instruments that have to do with nuclear energy. What better way to get acquainted with the theory than by putting it into practice? The reactor that David decided to build in his mother's backyard was a so-called breeder reactor. This is a nuclear reactor that is used in a nuclear power plant to produce fuel or energy from radioactive material. Such a reactor continues to produce fuel for itself in an endless self-sustaining cycle. These types of reactors are often criticized in the scientific world because they are more prone to accidents than normal nuclear power plants. The chemical element plutonium is also produced in a breeder reactor, which can be used directly for the production of nuclear weapons, so it doesn't sound like the perfect nuclear reactor to build in a shed. In order to build a nuclear reactor like that, you must possess a number of dangerous radioactive materials. Uranium, barium sulfate, and erythium, they're all radioactive elements, you wouldn't expect a Boy Scout to possess. You would expect that he had to go to great lengths to obtain these materials. Nothing turned out to be farther from the truth. Without too much effort, David managed to gather the raw materials he needed for his extreme chemistry project. After the ensuing fiasco, the US government became a lot more vigilant when it comes to these kinds of materials, especially with regard to potential terrorists. You were speaking with, David didn't have to work very hard he didn't come up with an overly complicated plan to get the material. No, he just called up some organizations and pretended to be a chemistry professor. He wrote a few letters to some institutes, signed under a false alias, and before he knew it he had laid his hands on dangerous radioactive materials. He contacted the Nuclear Regulatory Commission NRC, the American Nuclear Society ANS, the Edison Electric Institute, and the Atomic Industrial Forum. None of these parties questioned his identity. They were all happy to help with his life-threatening chemistry experiment. 
David had also discovered that small amounts of radioactive material could be found in everyday objects. For example, he extracted the substances from smoke detectors, old luminous clocks, and camping lanterns. In small quantities, these substances don't pose a very big dangerous, but the amount David collected would have startled most experts. For other radioactive elements, David didn't have to be very resourceful or cunning. For example, he just placed an order for the extremely dangerous radioactive substance uranium in Czechoslovakia and asked the local hospital for some barium sulfate. It didn't take long before he had both substances in his laboratory. Now that he had all the materials, he could get to work. But whether this would turn out to be a good decision? As described earlier, breeder reactors are often criticized. That's why not many have been built. The breeder reactors that have been built have now all been decommissioned. Either they were closed because they proved too dangerous, or they had caused a nuclear meltdown. That sounds just as dangerous as it really is. If professional breeder reactors have already proved to be too dangerous, how on earth was David supposed to succeed? A Boy Scout, without any formal education, who built an enormously unpredictable nuclear reactor with household materials. No wonder this story ended badly. And all this in his mother's backyard. This is how it happened. David Hahn built a nuclear reactor in his mother's backyard shed. He made a reactor core from the radioactive radium and americium he had collected from the clocks and smoke detectors and wrapped it with foil-wrapped blocks of thorium with some uranium powder. David added blocks of carbon to this and wrapped it all up with duct tape. The homemade nuclear reactor turned out to be functional, much to David's delight. He had managed to build a nuclear reactor in his lab. Now he had to get that atomic energy badge. The reactor worked so well that David was able to measure the radioactive radiation from his nuclear reactor up to five houses away. That was not quite what he'd intended. He put the health of his neighbors at risk. David may have been very indifferent with respect to his own health, but the health of other people was very important to him. As extraordinary as this chemistry experiment was, this was a step too far for him. He decided to dismantle the reactor. He managed to do this as well without anything going wrong, which in itself was quite an achievement too. But now he had to find somewhere to get rid of the radioactive material. There is no bin for radioactive waste at the landfill, so he had to get creative. David faced a difficult choice. He couldn't turn the material anywhere without casting suspicion on himself. What Boy Scout walks around with a huge amount of radioactive material? They would probably think he had terrorist plans. No, he had to get rid of it in secret. Burying the material was not an option either. This would poison the soil to such an extent that the area around his house would become uninhabitable. He was very fond of his neighborhood, so this wasn't a good choice either. There was nothing he could do but to move the material to a place where he would not be bothered by it. That evening, David's neighbors called the police, not because they had suddenly grown an extra finger or leg because of the radiation, but because they thought their neighbor was behaving very suspiciously. He was busy with a car, and in the dark, it was difficult to see exactly what was going on. When the police arrived on the scene, it turned out that the report had been wrong. The officer had expected to find a boy who was trying to steal a car. But no, the car turned out to be the boy's own. Not that there was nothing insane going on, because the boy in question was busy loading something very bizarre in his trunk. The cop who brought David in had no idea what he found. All he knew was that the young man was acting suspiciously. He took David to the station for further investigation. The nuclear reactor went along as well. David decided to report that it was radioactive material. This changed everything. Suddenly, all kinds of authorities got involved in David's arrest. As a result, it took months before any progress was made. It was only after a long time that the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, went to David's house to assess the damage. The EPA had gone to David's house and had carried out several tests there. They wanted to know what damage David had done to the people and the environment around his lab shed. David had expected it to be not too bad, which is why he was shocked when the researchers discovered how badly it had gone wrong. According to the EPA, David's homemade nuclear reactor had exposed some 40,000 people in his area to extremely dangerous amounts of radiation. 
and all this from the shed in his mother's backyard. This would have huge effects on the health and lives of those who lived around him. David Hahn, the Boy Scout who exposed 40,000 people to dangerous radioactive radiation, died at the age of 39. You would expect this to be the result of his chemistry experiment, but no. The amateur chemist died as a result of drug and alcohol abuse.